Hello, it is Writing Wednesday, and I'm here at my friend Jane, so whenever you see that bicycle, uh, you'll know that it's, uh, uh, I'm at her house, so if you hear uh, people talking in the background, uh, it's because uh, she has a, um, a monthly meeting of the minds, and so that's the sound of the minds meeting. Hello. And... Um, but I don't want to miss Writing Wednesdays, and I don't want to miss the confab, so uh, this is my compromise. All right, um, so I uh, hope writing has been going well this week. Um, I turned in my edits on Monday, and uh, this is the second book, uh, Chimes of Life, Lost Cathedral. And it is cold in L.A. for us. We have snow down to the 2,000-foot level. Uh, mountains are really beautiful. And uh, um, so, yeah, I finally turned in my uh, edits. Uh, that book is making progress in the production schedule. So edits are when it still uh, looks like the way it did when you turned it in. The next time I see it will be at the end of the month, and it will look uh, it will look like actual pages. Uh, and that's when generally you really hate your novel the most because you it's like you see everything that's wrong with it. Oh God. So I have a month of uh, reading. Um, I'm reading like mad. I started a short story last night. I haven't written a short story in years. Um, just reading a lot. And, uh, and today I thought we would uh, talk about how to put your reader in the body of the character. I mean, that's how you get the identification with the story. That's how it, it makes it real is the character physically in scene, um, smelling, tasting, touching. Um, we've talked a lot about using the senses. And the senses are essential to bringing the reader into the story. Now, um, one of the things that people have a lot of trouble with is how to put the character, reader in the body of the character, i.e. how to get the writer into the body of the character. Often very hard to do. We have a lot of stomachs clenching in fiction. Uh, and you can't, stomachs clenching is cliche, cold sweat is cliche. Oh, I got a, I got a, uh, a peach mimosa, yay. <laughs> and, uh, um, what I use is something called, uh, I've developed something called the Rosetta Stone. The Rosetta Stone. And I'll turn the camera around um, in a few minutes so you can actually see what I'm doing. And what the Rosetta Stone is, is it takes a, an emotion that you, um, you want to convey eventually to the reader. The hard thing is emotions are very fleeting. They're always in the body. They're very fleeting. Um, so that when you're in a, you know, an even keel and you're writing in your writing space, how do you remember what terror felt like in the body? Disappointment, um, satisfaction. Um, you tend to just run to the cliches, you know, the cold sweat, the, all that stuff. So. The answer to this is the Rosetta Stone. And I like using these speckled notebooks because I'm really into uh, the way things look on the shelf. So I want to have a certain kind of material in a certain kind of notebook, very uh, obvious. You know, my big journals, the big black journals, and then the spiral travel journals. And this is another of my must have the speckled composition notebook. And uh, um, <laughs> somebody wants me to have a sip of my mimosa. Okay, here we go. Mm. Mm. So um, how you use the Rosetta Stone. Now, you know the real Rosetta Stone had the same text in, was it five different languages, uh, alphabets, so that if you read Greek, you realize, oh my God, these other, all of these, that these other inscriptions are the same 
This is Chaz. I'm taking up his desk. <laughs> it's his bike. He's the bike guy. All right. Looking for your computer. Okay. Thanks, Chaz, letting me, letting us use your space here. Appreciate it. Um, so the Rosetta Stone helps you remember. Um, it helps you translate. Okay. So they were able to read the Greek when they rediscovered the Rosetta Stone, and then it unlocked Egyptian, Assyrian, all these other alphabets that were also on the stone. It was a uh, um, entrance to um, all these other ways of seeing things. Well, the Rosetta Stone for emotion uh, works just two ways. One is what is the emotion and then what are the feelings in the body uh, that correspond to that emotion. So what, what you need to do to start working on your Rosetta Stone is to get very, very quiet. Some people are, find their emotions are closer to the surface at certain times of day. Uh, very, you know, maybe if you're up in the middle of the night, it's an easier uh, way to you know, your emotions seem very close to the surface. Or any time you feel very quiet, very open, uh, is a good time to do this. There are two ways to do it. One is when you experience the emotion. You know, you've just gotten a shock. You've just gotten a disappointing phone call. The emotions are very vivid in your body. Uh, at that point. That is where you write down the emotion, disappointment. You just got a call saying <laughs> the date's off. So disappointment is the emotion and then the bodily um, reactions. And notice that if anybody's into somatic therapy, S-O-M-A, soma, body, somatic therapy, it's they tell you how emotions move through the body so watch the movement you know what else like it's not just the first thing the dry mouth the terror but it it'll start moving through the body and notice and when your character is experiencing utter terror or disappointment or whatever you are going to use all of those bodily sensations um, they'll be very accurate and very fresh um, Something I notice, say, um, for instance, something would happen to me. Um, I would feel a strong emotion. Often I didn't even know what it was, but I would feel a strong emotion. I would write down the body sensations. And then I could look back and see where else I'd seen those particular sensations and realize, oh, that's disappointment. That's yearning or whatever. Um, so here's one after uh, a, um, a uh, disappointing interaction with a man I was dating years ago. You know, So heavy in chest, fluttering in the solar plexus, fluttering heartbeat, whirl in forehead. Um, there's a, somebody hadn't contacted me that I was dating in six months, and it was just brutal because I was very into that one. Uh, and I noticed a heartbeat high in the chest, like notice actually where in the body you're experiencing stuff. Heartbeat high in the chest, pressure in the U of the throat. I felt that U. I can use that all day long in fiction writing. So, um, you can feel where the feeling is and then diagnose what it is, or you can start with um, the emotion and then notice where it is in the body. Um, what does betrayal feel like? Here was something I actually saw, uh, somebody who had like, really screwed me over, seeing them at random on the street when they were supposed to be somewhere else, right? Hollow in stomach, weak in our upper arms, feel I feel my teeth and jaws, slack but aching, tightness between breasts. I felt kind of buck-toothed, like 
Ah, uh, the roof of my mouth and throat felt puffy. My eyes felt heavy and old. Now see, that's the kind of thing I can use all day long. So one good thing when you feel a strong emotion to stop and just, you know, often it's something upsetting, but it could be something fabulous. Stop and try to describe the physical sensations because the more you're able to collect these, the more vivid your scenes are going to be, the more your, your um, reader is going to experience what the character experiences rather than just labeling emotions. She felt sad. Well, what does it feel like to feel sad? Exactly in the human body, how does that feel? Oh, she fought tears, you know, it's like, let's get really specific and get, you know, release the, release the cliche, release the standard version, and really be a scientist of your own body and experiment, you know? So the first thing is when you know damn well what's happened, notice where it is in the body and you can always and then label it okay that's disappointment um, and then you can go to it when your character is disappointed and notice so here's the other way to do it uh, this you don't have to come off of a direct experience at the moment um, is to take a um, what I would suggest is using the family of man, and I'm going to start turning the camera around. Um, okay, the thing with the family of man, this is a very famous uh, exhibition after World War I to kind of show how we are all human beings. We're all in the same boat. It's um, um, created by the the amazing Edward Steichen for the Museum of Modern Art. Um, and there are photographs from all over the world showing common human emotion. They're centered around events, rituals, and emotion. And so say I want to kind of study my, you know, to add to my Rosetta Stone. I would take a uh, one of the photographs, like this section, is about parents and children. So from all over the world, I'm going hunting with my boy or I have to leave my baby. You know, if I want to create a clear emotion, say I want to write about, I want to look at this, say this seems to move me pretty strongly. It's a, obviously somebody saying goodbye to their little kid going to war. Um, or it could be somebody just coming home from war and the kid doesn't even know them anymore. But that is a very um, moving, it's so sharp, it's a, it's a farewell. So let's, I would call this emotion farewell or, you know, saying goodbye. And I would notice the feelings that arise in my body when I'm looking at it. I feel tight between the bre my breasts. I feel um, my heart beat a little higher in the body than usual. I feel a tightness uh, around my ribs. I feel that pressure in my upper chest. I feel like a bit of a tingle at the roots of my hair. Um, it's hard to breathe in deeply, you know, the breathing becomes very um, kind of above the, above the ribs. I can't get a deep breath looking at this one. Um, then I, you know, there are f wonderful family groups. So you just go through, the emotions in, in this one are very strong. Um, I, you know, it's like, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? Um, here's, here's, and here's a, you know, I've certainly been every single person here, but this is the one that moves you, right? So how does that feel? I feel it in the back of my neck. I feel a weariness. I feel my head coming forward. 
I feel a tightness in the solar plexus. Tightness in my neck, in my belly. You know, it's a heavy feeling of heaviness and uh, weariness. Also hard to breathe, uh, being that third wheel. Let's see what else there. There's one picture that I just love in here. I'm going to try to find it. Um, I'm sorry, I should have marked these. This is how much prep I do. I thought about it, but... <laughs> uh, let's see, there's one that I... Anyway, there was a kind of a joyous one of um, a Midwestern crowd uh, watching a movie. Uh, let's see if I can find it. I just love... But all of these are emotions. There's an emotion in every one of these pieces. That's why they picked it. Um, this one. I just love this. This is the first one I think I did. Is this Midwestern audience watching a movie. And look at these faces. And nobody's glamorous, you know, but they are all just having a great time. It's probably Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> and it's like, what does delight feel like in the body, this kind of happiness? And what I noticed most um, about it was that I felt very heavy in my ass. I can say ass because it's not TV. I felt this very heavy feeling in my ass and that, that I've noticed since then that that to me that certain kind of happiness that's where it dwells in my body that there's a bubbly feeling in the chest uh it's this heavy ass comfort feeling um uh there's an openness in the chest um a uh, a calmness over chest and shoulders a warmth on the skin and I got, I get that from this. So I don't always want to say a, a heavy ass when somebody's happy, but I find a way to describe that without, um, without uh, being too, uh, sounds depressing. So you can go and you can talk about uh, yourself and your own emotions. So you can talk about your own emotions or you, you know, through direct, you know, somebody just said something to me. Use those times. You don't have to, you know, just absorb that and wait for it to dissipate. If, as a writer, that is gold. It's like somebody was a real jerk to you and you could feel that in your body. It's like, <gasps> that's gold. Grab your notebook and write that, write that down because some of the things I've been complimented the most in my writing are is my ability to capture these emotions. Like I noticed getting a, sh a bad, like getting a phone call with, you know, bad news, um, how heavy my arms got, how weak. I couldn't have made a fist if my life depended on it. It just felt weak. I felt like I was going to, you know, you just you couldn't hold anything. So if you have a character getting a phone call that's a disappointed phone call, you get this in, I use this in Paint It Black when she got the phone call from the morgue um, or from the cops, that she couldn't hold the phone, you know, that her arms just felt weak. I got that from these exercises. So somebody tenses behind the ears, you know, there's all, I mean, everybody physically is very different, but if you notice where you experience emotion and you keep the Rosetta Stone, so, you know, when you're lonely, you write it down, and then when your character's lonely, you go to the, I mean, that sharp, horrible loneliness. You can go to the Rosetta Stone and say, okay, loneliness, um... I know I had it because I just saw it. Well, I don't see it right now. But I see, say, sadness, disappointment. Um, I don't even know what I'm feeling here, I wrote. I was feeling this emotion. I couldn't even put a 
put a name to it. I just wrote down the emotions, the physical sensations, and then I could look back and go, oh, that's this emotion. So twinge in right hand, stiffness in forearms, dryness in mouth, stomach achy, dry, small mouth. My mouth felt kind of dry and, and shrunken. My neck is cricking, you know, uh, stomachy, you know, like heavy in the belly, stomachy, um, droopy eyed, front of shoulders and collarbone very tight in here, uh, tight on right on the knob at the back of the neck and shoulder. Um, my heart felt very tight, my lungs not couldn't take that deep breath. Uh, I could feel the underwire of my bra like cutting into me. Um, the a weight in my heart, the droopiness in my neck. I, I can't hold my head up. And this is this is sadness. That's sadness. You know. So when a character feels sad, I can't just say, "Oh, they felt sad," but I can actually go back and and see where in the body. So, can I think of good writers who? Uh, any writers who are really good at doing this except me. Um, writers who write about the body are really, you know, the ones we respond to the most. I think that um, you might call them introverted writers, uh, not as much action and more feeling through the action. I know Jeanette Witterson, you know, written on the body. I mean, she's a body person. First Body by Melanie Ray Fawn, uh, another real body-oriented um, work. I think that... Um, I think that uh, Sylvia Plath in The Bell Jar, you know, that was very body uh, aware. Who else? I'll throw it out there. Anybody know uh, somebody who is uh, very body oriented in their writing? Um, there are a lot of them. And most people, most good writers who can do emotion are, are able to do this. Um, let's see. Thank you. So, you know, it'll affect how people speak in a scene if they are undergoing this kind of, say, say disappointment, seeing I was able to get that. They'll have a, a uh, maybe Pat Conroy, could be, but you'll see that difficulty, you know, if they're, if they're having difficulty taking a breath, because of this of this emotion, um, that'll affect their speech. Because if they're having difficulty, they're not going to make a big speech. They're going to be speaking even in partial sentences and trying just to get through the conversation because the difficulty in taking that breath. Um, yeah, you know, it's the you know certainly the writers of the Bible were quite familiar with human bodies and how they worked. Um, I think that that respect for this is you know has gone on a long time. But you'll notice who you'll notice when you're reading who can do it and who tends to just uh, not deal with the emotions um, in an internal way or a very subtle way. <laughs> Uh, some skip it, and some are deep in it. I would say the bigger, the writer who is tends to write a longer line, a more explored scene, you know, Tolstoy, um, Styron, uh, probably does it pretty well. All right. Well, this is going to be a short one, but I thought we would uh, talk about something that I love to use. Um, so uh, I urge you to explore writing for the senses and I especially trying out the um, trying out the Rosetta Stone and keeping that as a regular practice when you don't have anything to do <laughs> when you don't have anything to do take out a book I recommend the family of man but other photo books that are very emotional it's important to notice how strongly a photo book uh, will stir an emotion. If you don't get a strong emotion, you're going to have a harder time with this. Um, 
but uh, there are a lot of really strong photographers. There's a lot of really strong art. Um, art is harder because it's more complex. What's nice about photograph is you can identify the emotion and then follow it through the body. Um, so notice your emotions when you feel something. Notice where in the body and, and write it down. Grab it, grab it, grab it. All right. Well, good writing, and uh, we'll see you next Wednesday. Okay, bye.